Yeah, the, the next question we have will be, if you are liquid right now, do you continue to wait and see what happens? Or are there selective deals that you would consider? And what are those, whether they're purchasing, whether they're lending, what are you all looking to do given the current climate of, of where we are? We'll start with, with uh, Chris. All right. Well, you know, it, it depends. I mean, like, I think it's both. I think you can definitely still have money working, but still keep some money on the side just for more opportunities as they're coming along the way, right? Keeping some of that dry powder. I'll tell you like right now, I mean, especially with the way the lending situation is getting, I think from a lending perspective, it's going to be a, a better deal even currently. For example, I'm trying to get a commercial loan right now and the commercial market's almost shut down completely for real estate. Residential is fine, although the rates are higher, right? But a commercial permit shut down for at least the next month and a half to two months. So, I mean, there's opportunities, I think, to be able to take advantage of right now. But yeah, I'm looking at both now and later. I think there's opportunities all the time. There's never a shortage of opportunities. I'll tell you that much. Mm. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Fuquan? Yeah, I mean, it's really challenging. I mean, discipline and patience is what comes to mind. I mean, it's the last week or so I've been, my inbox has been filled with different tapes or mortgage notes. It seems like a lot of people are trying to get liquidity and, and sell off some of these assets before the value of them drop even faster. You know, so we definitely changed our buy box and we're buying off a lower percentage of fair market value than we were before, somewhere 20 to 25 percent. So we find something that fits, you know, in that range. We're definitely going to execute and we're being more creative also with the type of deal structures we're doing. We're really marketing buying on terms, as I mentioned in the last session we had, and trying to be a little bit more creative with the sellers and just giving them what they need right now as far as liquidity and doing a lot of subject too. So, you know, our buy box and the way we buy definitely has changed, but we definitely see an opportunity that fits in the current climate. We're going to execute. We do know further down the road, there will be uh, an abundance of opportunity, but really practicing uh, patience and discipline I think is important right now for smart money. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what everyone said so far. There's always opportunity out there, always. You know, like, like we've talked about before, the capital markets have froze. Prices are, are going to be coming down. I mean, it's, I, I think we, we all know that to some degree, prices will be coming down. So, so yes, we are still actively looking to buy properties every day like we always do, but our offers are 20, 25% lower right now. We're trying to find out where the market is. You know, it just stands to reason with this coronavirus, people are not getting out, looking at properties right now. They're not looking at houses. They will come down. We just got to figure out how far. So. But I think there's going to be tremendous opportunity, you know, in the, in the coming months. And yeah, I just want to stay, just want to stay in tune with the market. Got it. Thank you, Glenn. Jacob? We're mainly focused on cash flow in our self-storage line of business. And we have deals that were under contract prior to the coronavirus. And back then, those deals were good. But now we're reconsidering deals that were just good. We're really on the we focus now on deals that are home runs. And we're also trying to put ourselves in a position where we can buy these things with cash, with price reductions. For example, we're buying a deal in Panama City, Florida next week. We were working on getting our debt lined up. We've got it in place, but they can't close until later. And the seller wanted to, instead of closing later with debt, they gave us the price reduction to buy with cash. So we got a better deal on it. It's full. It pays preferred return. And we can be flexible on our financing terms without kind of a closing gun to our head. But in addition to that, we're really stress testing deals a lot more than we used to be. We're concerned primarily with the amount of money that the average consumer is going to have in their pocket as this whole crisis manifests. And being in the storage business, uh, historically, it's been pretty resistant to recessions. But this is so new and so sudden and so fast, we just don't know what to expect. We're stress testing with delinquency rates. We're stress testing with lease up. What's the deal look like if we don't lease up any of the vacant units for the next year? What's the deal look like if we get a 15 or 20% spike in delinquency because people are losing jobs and unemployment's going up? So really just trying to be flexible with our terms, buy time from sellers when needed, and really stress these things in all directions to make sure it's still a good acquisition decision. But as everyone's mentioned, we feel like big opportunities can be coming in the next three to six months in the real estate sector. We're not seeing much of it yet. We're seeing some fear, but we're not seeing that fear translate to major price reductions. That's coming. I know it's going to, and 
we don't want to buy an okay or a decent deal today when we think there's going to be a home run deal in a, in a couple months down the road. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Mike? So the, the word of the day is patience today. You have to be patient to get better deals. In agreement with all my colleagues here, there are some deals you can close on today. I'll give you an example. We are trying. We had a deal with financing lined up with Lima One. They just backed out. It's a strong deal with the, with as is discount, very strong cash flow portfolio, but they backed out. So what do we do? Right now we're trying to negotiate on take it down with seller financing. Essentially mm -hmm. come to the seller and say, yep. Mr. Seller, if you want us to close, you gotta write us the paper. We'll still bring in significant down payment as we were planning to do with Lima, but uh, you'll have to carry the paper for a year probably. We don't know how long, but some amount of time until we can refinance. We just don't yep. know how long it'll take for the markets to restabilize. So we're probably gonna ask for a year or even longer. That's one strategy. The other strategy is exactly what Jake was saying and other ones. The deals today, they're beginning to look better, just beginning. But some are already happening, like Fuquan or Glenn was saying they can get acquisition price reduced by 20, 25%. And if you can do that, that's enough of a safety margin to go into the deals. But commercial deals, we, we do participate in many commercial deals. Take time for the pain to shake in. And that time is going to be probably a couple of months. So the spread between the bid and ask, what sellers want to take versus the, what the buyers want to pay is mm. significant now. It's, so it's widened quite a bit with uncertainty. The sellers don't want to give away the farm. And then the buyers don't want to overpay and financing is not available. Yeah. So with those two things, the time is to be patient as a buyer and let the sellers accumulate pain when they're going to bring the paper to the market, well, it, whether it's a paper, it's a note or actual asset, uh, the opportunity will be greater in a couple of months rather than now, mm -hmm. because at this moment, commercial players are able to defer or at least change their mortgages to interest only. They're working out with their lenders. It's going to be some level of cooperation and there's nothing wrong with this, but there will be a point in time where the pressure will be so great that they're going to be doing two things, potentially selling assets at a discount or two, as I mentioned earlier, taking on partners to mm -hmm. provide them preferred equity to salvage the deal. Then you can come in at great terms and participate in the deal coming in as kind of the last drop of the capital, having the most senior consideration at that point, having the safety and uh, get sort of the best greater return on your money. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we're going to see a heavy rise in, in uh, seller financing. I want to follow up with a with a, another question here with you guys and well before you get to that real quick we had an audience question i'm going to ask what does a stress test mean so i'm just going to cover that real quick it means that you're going to take and stress whatever it is by a certain percentage so if you for example are, are looking at cash flow mm -hmm. and you take 15 percent of the cash flow away or 20 percent of the cash flow away mm -hmm. in a year is it still a viable deal and if it still is, then you, you probably have a pretty good deal there. Wouldn't, yeah. you, wouldn't you agree? And then, yeah, and then you say, you know, with that cash flow and my cash reserves, if it does hit into a negative cash flow, how long can I su can support this until, you know, we can move the asset out, you know, with the market conditions? Right.